Hello, sustainable growers. Welcome to this uh, webinar, to this introduction to aquaponics uh, conference, online conference. I hope everyone can hear me. So I think there is a chat on this, um, on this webinar. So I'm just trying to discover the technique. So if there is someone that can hear me, please uh, leave me a comment so that I know that everything is working and we can start in good conditions. Uh, before anything, uh, just go to your kitchen, get a nice uh, glass of water and get ready for this conference so that you don't have to stop the conference at any time. Turn your phone off and uh, make sure everything is ready from your side. So from my side, I'm trying to see if uh, you can hear me. So it's going to take a few minutes for me to put everything in place. So if you have uh, the possibility to leave me a comment in the chat or in the comments below the video, just to let me know that you hear me. That would be great. Because uh, if you have any question at any time, I want to be able to respond to you. And at the moment, I'm not sure how it's going to work because, you know, I'm using uh, the free uh, YouTube application for this webinar. And uh, I'm not really sure technically how to respond to your questions. Anyway, I think I'm going to start the conference. And uh, yeah, please leave me some questions in the comments and I will respond to them into this video if I can have access to it. Otherwise, uh, I will respond to it um, later on when I review the comments and I'm, I, will, uh, I will write the response now. So right now, I'm going to try to put the slide on. So. Here we are. So normally you are able to see my screen. Okay, here we are. Now I think it works. Can you hear me? I hope you can. Okay, here we are. Yes. Now I think it works. Everything is working. So we're going to start this, uh, this conference. So today it's a real introduction to aquaponics. Mm -hmm. I'm going to talk about what, it, what is the interest of aquaponics? Yes, I got some response now. I got around who say, yes, we hear you. So perfect. Now we are ready to, to rock. So if you have any question, don't forget that you can ask them at any time and I will respond to them at the end of the webinar. So as I was saying, this is an introduction to aquaponics. So we're going to go through uh, this plan here. I'm going to talk about the current food industry. Uh, what is my point of view on the food industry? I'm going to give you a few, uh, few facts. I got a few studies with me. Um, and I'm going to share you my point of view on, on, this, uh, on this current system. Then I'm going to introduce myself for the one of you who don't know me. And then we're going to go uh, deeply into the topic. So aquaponics definition, how it works, what are the main advantages, what kind of food can we grow? Uh, you, we will see that it depends on the area where you live. And then we're going to respond to the most common questions. And obviously to you, if you, if you leave me some questions into the comments of this video. Um, and then we're going to see where to start aquaponics. So then we're going to go into some very technical information to give you the first, the first steps to start your aquaponics setup. And, uh, and I will continue by, by showing you what you can do to to have a successful aquaponics experience. 
So the current uh, food industry. So I got some studies with me right now. And uh, the first point I would like to raise is that in the, in, the, in the society we live in, most of the food we consume is produced in monoculture. Yeah, so I got a comment from Aran who says people can comment on Facebook. Yes, they can comment on Facebook, but unfortunately, I'm, uh, while I'm giving this, um, uh, this presentation, I'm not connected to Facebook. So I will be able to respond to all Facebook questions later on, but not in, uh, not in live. While if you leave me any comments on the, on the live right now on YouTube, I will be able to respond to it. So the current food uh, system we have living in uh, is based on monoculture, which is growing food uh, growing only one species at a time and not working with the natural interactions. Um, so the problem is, for example, in a field of corn, we are producing only corn and we are, I mean, the farmers are using pesticide to kill any other type of life that is growing around. Because that, you know, that in nature, all food, all, uh, all living creators are living in interaction with other living creators. But when human, when we try to produce food for ourselves, we try to kill everything else. And we only, I mean, the farmers are basically only using the field as a support because they kill all the interactions, all the living creatures, all the insects, the bacteria, all the worms. And basically they just put the seed of corn and they, they supply the water and they supply the fertilizer. So they don't use uh, all the natural interactions that are here that could help the growth of the plant. We use only artificial fertilizers and we have to work the soil while nature normally is doing it by itself. So all people who are doing some permaculture are well aware of this fact is that at the moment we are producing food uh, that is not efficient from an energy point of view. We are consuming more energy from the fuel, from the petrol we use to work the earth than what we get from the earth than the crop. And uh, unfortunately, we are also damaging the planet while, while we do this. So the second point I wanted to highlight here is, is the consumption of fossil fuels that we uh, that is uh, induced by this current production. Um, I think that's a big problem. We are consuming a lot of fossil fuels, so it's, it's a very re limited resource and it has a dramatic uh, impact on the environment. Finally, we got the problem of the transport. We know that the food that we eat at the moment is coming from everywhere in the world. For example, in Australia, we find some tomatoes coming from Spain or from Italy. You know, so uh, I have nothing against uh, the tomatoes that are grown in Spain and Italy, they are amazing. But the, the problem is they come from, they, they travel around the, the planet. You know, it doesn't make any sense why we could produce all this food where we live. So here I got a study in front of me who says that uh, the average uh, meal travels 2,414 kilometers, which is equal to 1,500 miles before it gets to you. So that's just for one meal. If you do the addition of all the different elements you have in one meal, you know, for example, potatoes plus the tomatoes, plus the meat, plus the sauce, all those things, if you add all the transport that was induced to to get all this food to your place, it's equal in average to 2,414 kilometers. And that's just for one meal, right? We eat three times a day. So this is just insane. It doesn't make any sense to me. And I believe uh, it has a very negative impact both on uh, the planet first, obviously, and on the quality of the food. Because unfortunately, when the food is picked, when it's not right, uh, you know, it's, for example, the tomatoes, most of the time they are picked when they are still green and then uh, they, trans they are transported into some, into the f some, yeah, refrigerated environment and uh, they just maturate artificially. So they don't develop uh, the best flavors, but also the vitamins that we need. And also they use a lot of pesticide to produce this food at the moment. So unfortunately, when we consume our food, we also consume all the pesticides that have been used to grow the food. And uh, unfortunately, there are some studies to 
try to make sure that the pesticide we eat are safe. Um, and I'm not sure how reliable are those studies when we know that they are financed by uh, the big food industry. But uh, the other problem we have is that there are no studies to, uh, to try to calculate the consequence of um, the interaction of the different pesticides all together. Because when you eat fruit, when you eat an apple, an apple is, for example, uh, in average 15 treatment, 15 pesticide treatment during uh, the life of the apple before it gets to you. So when you eat the apple, you get a, a blend of a lot of different chemicals that have been uh, spread on the apple. And you are eating that. And this cocktail of pesticide, you know, they, they react all together. And then there are no real studies about it. So what is the impact on our body? We don't really know. But what we can see nowadays is that more and more people fall sick, more and more people uh, are, in, you know, the infertility for, for males uh, is increasing. So we got a lot of problems in our society now nowadays. And uh, a big part of it is probably due to the, the quality of the food we are eating. So uh, I was talking about the vitamins. So the vitamin in the food we are eating now, nowadays, is way uh, lower than the vitamin that was into the, the food we were eating uh, like 10, 20, or 50 years ago. So in front of me, I got a study here. And it says that uh, in 1951, an adult woman could meet her daily requirement in terms of vitamin A by eating two peaches. In 2002, the same woman will need to eat 53 peaches to obtain the same amount of vitamin A. So it's just this, this study is an example to show you that the quantity of vitamins into the food we are eating has dramatically dropped. And uh, nowadays, if we want to consume the same quantity of vitamins, uh, we would have to eat a, a huge quantity of food, uh, which is basically unmanageable. Or we have to eat some um, artificial pills, you know, all those supplements. Um, so that a lot of people are consuming them. Uh, they cost a bit of money. But I think that's a bit of a shame to have to eat all those artificial pills where normally those kind of, um, of, of vitamins and really good elements should be found into the food we eat. And finally, I think the food we are eating at the shop right nowadays is completely tasteless. So for example, if you eat a tomato from the shop, it has no flavor. It looks, uh, it looks almost full of water. While when you eat a fruit from your aquaponic setup, it's just, or, or even from a garden, right? A, a real garden that has been, that has been well managed. Uh, a, a garden in permaculture, for example. If you eat a tomato from there, you will find that uh, the flavor has nothing to do. is is uncomparable. It's just amazing. It has a, a fantastic texture. Uh, and it explodes in your mouth. You know, you got a bit of acidity, a lot of uh, a lot of sweetness, uh, and a, a blend of flavors. So when when you eat a real tomato, you just realize, oh my god, I completely forgot what was a real tomato. You know, I grew up uh, in France uh, on the on the border of a river in the mountains, and uh, my parents had a garden, and they had a chicken coop, and we were used to eat this fantastic food. And then when I grew up, uh, I was a bit away from, from home because I had to travel for work and I didn't have access to this food anymore. So I, I get used to, um, to the supermarket food. But when I grew my food by myself again, I could find, uh, I could, I could find again this fantastic flavor that I had when I was a kid. And, uh, and then I, I, it was a shock for me because I realized that the food we are eating at the moment is completely tasteless. And, uh, it's a joke, really. You know, we are we are eating food to fill our body, but it's not even giving us any good um, any good energy, any good vitamins, all the the things that our, our body needs to to grow in in good health, to maintain a good health and good vitality, uh, are not found in the food we eat nowadays. So I think that's a big problem. And uh, my view of the current food industry is that it doesn't work. Uh, it just works for a few people who are basically managing uh, those big industries. But for the rest of us, we are just uh, suffering from this food industry. We can't find any good food in the current system at a decent price. So I'm just going to introduce myself now. Um, 
Obviously, my name is Jonathan. Uh, I founded in this company called Melbourne Aquaponics, uh, where we offer uh, aquaponics setup and aquaponics support. So as a kid, I've always been completely passionate and attracted by all aquatic environments. Uh, you know, I grew up around this river, as I was saying. The, the river is called the Doux. And in this river, um, I spent all my childhood uh, going fishing, going swimming, um, going snorkeling, studying, you know, studying the, the different animals that were living into this river, studying the fish, but also the interaction with the environment, you know, the different plants that were living in the river. Um, yeah, you know, for me, it was completely fascinating. Uh, I have always been very focused on it. I had plenty of aquariums in my, in my house, in my room. I had, as a teenager, I had seven aquariums in a very small room. So uh, it was a bit of a mess. Uh, all, we, all we could hear was the noise of the pumps. So, but anyway, I've always been very, very attracted by this. And I did my studies in, in those fields. Um, I started my studies well in landscaping when I learned a lot about uh, plants and uh, yeah, plants, vegetables, biology. And then I continued in aquaculture uh, and in food science. And I finished with a master in food science um, and, um, and aquaculture and quality. And I worked in different fish farms. And I thought it was my, um, I thought really I was designed <laughs> to work in aquaculture because I thought that's what I wanted. You know, I was so passionate by the aquatic environment. I wanted to grow fish. But while I was into those farms, I have been extremely frustrated because I didn't, working in those farms, I didn't really interact or I couldn't really study the interactions between the creatures into this aquatic environment. Because again, we go back to the first slide, you know, um, we were in monoculture again, where we were growing only one species of fish. You know, for example, I worked in trout farms. We were only growing trout and all the rest, we were killing everything else. So we were just using the water to grow the trout and anything else that was in the pond was a problem. If there were some algae growing, bacteria growing, anything, uh, you know, that we were using um, the hot pressure, um, water to just to, to clean the, the ponds we were basically avoiding any interaction between the fish and the environment and that's where all the all the magic is i think that's where basically when you remove that you remove all the the, the attract all the interest that i could have to this topic and instead of managing fish the fish are, were in such a high density that I was managing disease. So my job was to basically maintain the fish alive while they were stressed all day, all day long. They were stressed because there were there were too many fish in the in the pond. They were always disease. So I was always trying to maintain those disease at the lowest level possible, using chemicals, using antibiotics, uh, using uh, vaccines, uh, using pesticides. So. Because you know the fish, when you put them at high density, it's like humans. If we put too many humans all together, if one is sick, you know, then uh, the the disease is going to spread around. Especially if the others are weak. So that's exactly what happened in the pond, and uh, that was my big frustration for me. Um, I found that in a, in aquaculture, it was not adapted to what I wanted to do, and uh, we were not working with the environment. We were working against against nature, trying to do things that nature will never do by itself in nature you will never find uh, a field with only only the same spaces you know at one point or another nature regulates things and balance things because nature works with ecosystem where spaces are living all together so that was my big frustration but uh, thankfully after a while of research um, i worked for this farm where you know back in in 2000 there was this, uh, this specific uh, tax on the pollution in Europe. Uh, so basically now the farms have to pay a, a tax if there, if there really is a lot of pollution into the environment. So then all those farmers were at one point very interested to try to decrease the pollution in, in the environment. And we tried, uh, one, one thing was to, um, to get the water out of the, of the farm, to put this water through uh, a grow bed full of uh, bamboo. And we found that the bamboo was growing like crazy and the pollution was completely decreased. So basically the ammonia and the phosphorus 
uh, went from a very high concentration at the beginning of the grow bed and at the end of the grow bed uh, they were very low in, in concentration so the, the farmers were able to not pay the pollution uh, the tax for the pollution but in my mind i was like yeah that's that's amazing we can grow something from the pollution we generate from the farm the pollution i'm talking about the ammonia right which can be seen as a pollution when you have too many too much of one thing it becomes a pollution but if you transform it into the food for another system that then it becomes uh, it becomes not a pollution it becomes a source of food it becomes something valuable so then we found out yeah that's amazing we don't pay the tax for the pollution but what are we going to do with the, those bamboo because at the time we didn't have we didn't have any any market for it so then it was the beginning of the aquaponics as we know it nowadays in canada some people were starting to grow lettuce at the back of the farms and that's where i went into this field uh, and I've, I've been exper experimenting with different aquariums different things and then in 2013 i really developed i mean i, I launched this company called mebun aquaponics uh, where i really help people to grow their own food at home and the aim is really to spread this uh, this technique all around the planet because i believe nowadays that everyone thanks to aquaponics and permaculture in general is should be able to produce his own food where he lives so instead of buying food that is coming from the other side of the world we can just produce him the food at home and uh, eating it while it has it develops the full vitamins the food the full um, tests you know the best test and producing a food that is healthy for everyone so that's where now i'm very happy i'm happy in life because i'm i'm able to work in this field where i help people to produce amazing food at home and uh, to preserve also the planet so that was all about myself now i'm going to talk about aquaponics so the history of aquaponics you know we hear about aquaponics um, um, it's quite recent you know 10 years ago nobody talked about it well actually there is a whole history about aquaponics it just didn't have this name this specific name so here you can see the picture on the right so that's picture of a paddy field so that's where they grow the rice um, rice is a plant that needs a lot of water to grow so they plant the rice into those paddy fields and you can imagine 2000 years ago maybe or even more it's very hard to give a, a specific date but back in the days they were growing the rice and they were found that they had a lot of pests you know because here you are close to a monoculture as well where you grow only rice so obviously as soon as you got a pest such as aphids or some insects that are growing on the rice and that are eating the rice well uh, the production of rice decreased right so they the thought okay we're gonna introduce some fish and see what happens because you know it's an aquatic plant it grows into some water so sometimes you can have up to 20 centimeters of water into the paddy field so they introduced the fish that we can see on the bottom right corner which is called tilapia which is a, a tropical fish uh, very famous in asia and uh, it's uh, it's a fish also that is a uh, that you can find everywhere in the world because uh, it's very easy to grow so a lot of farmers are growing it and when they introduce the field into the uh, paddy uh, the, sorry when they introduce the fish into the paddy field they realize that the fish was eating uh, the the bugs that were growing on the on the rice so the rice was growing much better but also while the fish were eating was eating all those bugs he was also pooing into the water and the ammonia produced by this poo by the fish uh, was actually transformed thanks to some bacteria into fertilizer for the for the for the rice into nitrates and therefore the rice was growing twice as fast so they found okay that's a fantastic way at the end of the season they re they, they harvested the, the rice that was a fantastic crop plus they had the fish so a free animal protein that was grown with the rice and that's basically the beginning of aquaponics and that's the general principle it's to grow uh, different spaces all together and to use the natural uh, interactions so now if we look at aquaponics nowadays uh, you know nowadays you can see some very small setups that are adapted to backyard and we we use this word aquaponics which is actually the combination of two uh, other words that are aquaculture and hydroponics 
So both of those systems, they are uh, monoculture systems. So they are back into the first um, the first uh, slide that I had. You know, when I was saying that the current food system is um, is based on monoculture, and that's not something that is really good, I, I believe. But here, uh, what we are doing in aquaponics, we we mix them together to make a real ecosystem. So I just want to talk about those two uh, systems that are aquaculture and hydroponics. So aquaculture is obviously growing food. So here you got a picture on the top right corner and you can see a lot of fish that are grown together in a pond. So you can see the density of fish is very high. There are some areas where the water, you can't even see the bottom of the pond, you know, it's all black of fish. So it's very high density. That's, that's something to really understand. And that's a difference we're going to have between aquaponics and aquaculture. In aquaculture, the farmer is only rely, rely, uh, relying on uh, the fish production. So he wants to maximize the production and he's going to put the fish at very high density to uh, maximize the profit. So in any system, you always got some things that you put in the system and some things that you take back from the system. So here we want to produce fish. To produce fish, we have some input. So we put some, obviously, fish food. In aquaculture, we use a lot of water and a lot of oxygen. The oxygen that we use in aquaculture, sometimes in very intensive farms, we use pure oxygen. So it's not the it's not just aerating the water, it's injecting pure oxygen into the water. So here we, we use some, um, some very high technology. Uh, the oxygen is under pressure and uh, it costs a lot of money and it costs also a lot of, uh, it has a high impact on the environment to use this technology. We also use a lot of antibiotics because as I said before, the fish are stressed. So they fall sick very easily. So we use antibiotics to get rid of all the bacteria. You know that on fish, same as on human, you have three types of disease. You have, I mean, three main types of disease, sorry. So you get uh, the bacteria that can cause a, uh, a negative uh, can have a negative impact on the fish, some special bacteria, some special disease. You're going to have some parasites that are living on the skin of the fish, on the gills, or inside the body of the fish. And you can have some virus as well, same as, same as human. Another problem, another thing that we use in aquaculture is pesticides. So two different fields, you know, antibiotics and pesticides are different. The antibiotics are going to act on the bacteria that are acting on the fish and the pesticides are going to act on uh, the, the parasites. So, you know, when you got uh, some special parasites that are on the skin of the fish, you need to put some pesticide in the water that are strong enough to kill all the parasites. But just um, you, you limit the concentration of pesticide just to make sure that your fish are going to survive. So obviously, every time in aquaculture you use some pesticides, you lose some fish as well, but that's the weak fish. But well, the problem is all those things, uh, they remain into the fish, right? So at one point or another, you find a small concentration. So it can be a very small concentration, but you still find it in your plate. And the other problem is that you find it into the environment. So in aquaculture, when we feed the fish, we got all the ammonia that is going back into the river and it creates a lot of pollution because uh, it's a high wave, a really high concentration. So you got too much of it and the water, the river just can't handle it. So you got some pollution that is created. Uh, you got some food and fish waste. You got some pesticide waste. Uh, oh, sorry. So that's basically the picture of what we are doing, what the society is doing with aquaculture at the moment. So you can see that to produce fish, we consume a lot of things and we release a lot of bad things into the environment as well. Uh, now, if we talk about hydroponics, so I'm going to go a bit faster, but at the same principle, we are hydroponics is basically growing food without um, the interaction with uh, the environment. So without also any earth, without any soil. So we just use a media and we don't use any bacteria, no life at all. Just we just inject some fertilizers and some water to make sure that the plant has what it needs to um, develop a large biomass. So obviously we have some vegetable nutrients. We use some pesticides as well because we got the same problem. We can have some bugs on the on the plants. We use some uh, uh, treatments specific to the disease we have. In terms of output, we, we collect some vegetables, but we also have some organic wastes. We have some pesticides waste as well. 
and we got some disease treatment. So you can see that to produce vegetables, we got also a negative impact on the environment, but also we use a lot of pesticides and uh, chemicals. Now, if we look at aquaponics, aquaponics, I said before, that's a combination of those two, of those two techniques. So you could think that, yes, you're going to have all the inputs of aquaculture plus hydroponics all together, and all the output of uh, aquaponics and hydroponics all together. But in reality, in aquaponics, we are working in a closed environment. And therefore, a lot of things that are going to be created by one uh, part of the system are going to be recycled by the other part. And we are in such low densities that the idea is not to fight against the disease once they are developed. The idea in aquaponics is to create an environment that is so good for all parts of the system and for the fish, vegetables, and bacteria that are here that basically uh, the fish are strong and they are not going to be weak, they are not going to fall sick because we, we give them the best environment and we avoid to put them in really bad condition in very high density. So obviously we don't use any pesticide, any antibiotics and any disease treatment. We also don't use any pure oxygen. We simply aerate the water thanks to some aerators. So we don't have to use this high technology that is consuming a lot of energy and that can be very dangerous. We don't use any specific water Obviously, we use water, right? I don't, I'm not going to say the opposite, but what I mean is that we are in a closed environment. So once you fill your tank with water, the water remains into the tank. So you got some evaporation, but the water that is here is uh, is remaining there. There is no uh, there is no lost into the soil. Uh, you really maximize what you can do with the quantity of water that you use. And also, we don't use any specific uh, vegetable nutrients because all the food that is generated, uh, uh, I mean, all the food that is used by the vegetables is going to be produced from the waste of the fish. So finally, in aquaponics, the only input we have is the fish food. In terms of output, we got some pesticides waste. Uh, that we had into the into the previous system. So here we don't have any because we don't use some pesticide. Fish waste and fish waste, but no, we don't have any waste here because they are reused. They are, they are recycled by the by the ecosystem, so we can remove them. And then uh, obviously all the pesticides, all the waste we had also on the other um, on the other hydroponics, we remove them as well. So finally. The principle of aquaponics is that we use only fish food and we produce vegetables and fish. So that's the cleanest system we can have. You know, we, we just close the loop. We are really working as nature is doing. You know, in, in the forest, you go to the forest, you are not going to see any pollution generated because everything is recycled. That's the same thing in, a, in an aquaponic system that is well managed. And here we can see that we use fish food, but at the moment we are working on a lot of different projects to try to create to design the fish food by ourselves, right? Because you can you can grow some insects and you can feed your fish with those insects, for example. So there are a lot of things to do to basically minimize this input and basically having two output vegetables and fish. So this is just amazing. That's for me. That's a, that's a dream. Uh, you know the Garden of Eden. Um, that's that we are very here. Because here we work with nature, we don't have to do anything. We're in a closed system where we recycle everything. We don't use any pesticide antibiotics that are really bad for uh, the environment and for ourselves. And the food that we produce is very healthy, healthy, strong, full of vitamins and extremely tasty. So without having to do anything, you know, because the system is, is managing, managing himself, uh, the only thing you need to do sometimes to times is to uh, to make sure that you offer a good environment for this ecosystem to live on. But you are not gonna you are not gonna add anything to the system. Like you are not gonna add the the, the, nit the nitrogen, uh, the the fertilizer for the plant or those kind of things. You know, it's it's really taking care of itself. It's watering by itself. You know, in in summer here in Melbourne we got some temperature that are ra uh, raising to. 40 degrees so i got all my neighbors we got neighbor we got a, a garden who are watering the system 
But with my aquaponic setup, everything is done. I can go on holiday. You know, I don't have to do anything. The only thing I have to do is to feed my fish and uh, to harvest the vegetables and to make sure that obviously uh, the, the environment is correct for the ecosystem. But it's very basic, very, uh, very, it's a very easy task once you understand, once you understand how to do it. So I really think uh, the Eden Garden is still a, is still a possibility for every one of us. So here we have a setup. So in terms of composition of the setup, you got three uh, living creators. We always talk about the fish and uh, the vegetables, but there are also some bacteria. So here, if we look at this setup, you can see there is a bench where you can sit. But if you leave the bench underneath, you got a fish tank. So that's where the fish are living. Then you see this part where you got all the vegetables, all the plants that is growing. That's a grow bed. So the vegetables are growing on top of what we call a media. This is a volcanic rock. So here you got a grow bed that is full of volcanic rock. And basically the water is raised from the fish tank to the grow bed. And a lot of bacteria are living here. And those bacteria, they are positive bacteria. They are what we call aerobic bacteria. And they're going to play a key role in aquaponics. They are doing the magic of transforming all the pollution that is created by the fish. You know, if you leave a fish in a fish tank without any pump, without renewing the water, at one point or another, the fish is going to die simply because it's going to release some ammonia into the water. And this ammonia is going to raise in terms of concentration. And uh, the fish can handle a very low concentration of ammonia. The, the ammonia becomes very quick, to quickly toxic. So here in aquaponics, this ammonia, thanks to the bacteria that are living here, is going to be transformed in what we call nitrate, and then in nitrate. And the nitrate is a fertilizer for the plant. So basically, the water is always purified by those bacteria and by those plants. And then the water goes back into the fish tank in the best conditions, and it's very fresh. So what I just was just saying here is in, uh, you got a, a nice representation of this uh, nitrogen cycle. It's also called the, the cycle of life because all life is based on this principle. So here we adapt it to the aquatic environment. Uh, so you got the fish food and you can see that uh, the fish are eating the food and they poo into the environment, into the water, and they create uh, the ammonia. And then you got some specific bacteria that are going to transform this ammonia into nitrate and other bacteria are going to transform this nitrate into nitrate. Um, and finally, the vegetables are eating this nitrate, and so it's really some pure water into the, into the fish tank. So aquaponics has a, a lot of advantages. You know, We talked about the fact that it has a very low uh, impact on the environment. But here are a few other advantages. One of them is that you don't have to weed your grow bed because um, it's, it's grown on a rest bed. So basically, all the seeds of the, the weeds that can grow around are not coming into your, into your grow bed. While it can always happen that you have one or two seeds uh, of what we call weed that are falling into the grow bed, but it's, in this case, it's going to be extremely easy to remove. It's never a job, never a labor. Then you got no water in, as I was saying before, huh? because we are into this system where you always got water. Um, the food is the food produced is extremely tasty because all uh, the plants that are growing there, they have access to all uh, the different nutrients they need, thanks to the bacteria, but also a lot of insects, because we are working in a real ecosystem that is very complex, and that is going to produce this specific um, profile of nutrients available for the plant. So that's a big difference with um, what we call uh, hydroponics. In hydroponics, humans are putting the fertilizer for the plant. In aquaponics, we are not, as human, we are not putting what the plant needs. We are just feeding our fish. And then the magic of nature, the magic of the bacteria, all those bacteria are going to work to transform this fish food into basically some plant food. But that's what happened in nature. So you're going to have a lot of different bacteria, but a lot of different insects, a lot of worms as well, a uh, lot of living creatures that are going to have a specific role here. And the order the aquaponic setup is, 
and the more complex and the more uh, va um, uh, diversified this uh, this profile of nutrients is going to be and uh, the more flavors and uh, the more the more uh, i mean the, the plants that are growing here are going to have more ability to develop the best the best fruit the best uh, vegetable the best leaves you know the best flavors the best vitamins so uh, an old aquaponic setup is going to offer the best the best conditions to your uh, vegetables so that's a very big difference with hydroponics where in, in hydroponics we know as human we know what a plant needs to grow some big biomass some big fruits uh, some uh, uh, fruits that are looking good but there is not much research to know what they need to grow some nice uh, food that is full of vitamins that is high in nutrients you know because what the farmers want at the end of the day is to is to sell a lot of food and to sell the food they want the food to basically to be grown in, in bigger uh, quantities and to look good because the, the customer is buying with his eyes. So when you see a good apple, an apple that is looking good, you're going to buy it, but you have no idea how it's going to taste like and what is the profile in terms of vitamins inside. While in aquaponics, we work with nature. Nature is doing what it, what it has always done in the past. So we are relying on nature to develop the best things. And that's exactly what happened in normal garden. But here, we make sure the plant has always access to those nutrients. So obviously, when we have an aquaponics setup at home, we maintain a high contact with nature and we reintegrate nature in, his, in the environment. So if you live in the city, you may not see a lot of insects around. You may not see a lot of birds not a lot of life but if you put an aquaponic setup in your place what is going to happen is that at the beginning it's a very simple ecosystem so during this presentation and in general when we talk about aquaponics we talk about three living creatures that we we, we know that are the fish uh, the bacteria and the plants but the reality is that the eco ecosystem of an aquaponic setup is very open especially if you have it outside so you're going to have a lot of insects that are going to come around. Some of them are going to be pests. When we say pests, is that they're going to start to eat your vegetables. But thankfully, in nature, you got you got everything, you know, and you got some insects that are going to be here to as a predator to regulate the pest. So the reality is that you always got you always share a bit of your crop with nature. You, I believe that we share probably twenty percent of our crop with nature. But on the other side, we don't have to spray the crop. We don't have to do anything. Nature is doing, is dealing with the problems by itself. It's solving the problem by itself, thanks to those predators that are around. So you got all this life around your aquaponic setup, and uh, you don't have to do anything. But you can, what you can do is to observe and uh, admire those insects all around and those birds that are going to come because you got insects. You also got some butterflies. Unfortunately, they spawn on the crop and they <laughs> create uh, some caterpillars that are going to eat your crop. But thankfully, there are some insects that are going to eat those, uh, those, uh, sorry, those caterpillars. So the birds are part of them. We also got some black hornets here in Melbourne. There are some little flies that spawn inside the caterpillar. And then some larvae are going to grow inside the caterpillar. And then the caterpillar is going to die and is going to give birth to hundreds of uh, black hornets. So then you're going to have all those little soldiers that are going to be here around and looking for other caterpillars. So you see that in nature, you always got the solution that is there. All you need to do is to, do is to offer a good environment uh, for those spaces to come around and uh, to grow. So having an aquaponic setup is really going to bring nature back into your house, into your backyard. You're going to also find out that the, plant are going, the plants and the vegetables are going to grow extremely fast. And the reason why, it's, I think it's quite simple. If you look at a classic garden, the plants are into the garden and they are trying to grow, but they are limited by the quantity of fertilizer, the quantity of nutrient that are available around them, right? That's why a lot of people go to the shop and they buy some fert plant fertilizer. But in aquaponics, it's different. In aquaponics, we got this fertilizer. It's not a fertilizer, but the nutrients, the natural nutrients 
the nitrates and a lot of other elements that are naturally available 100% of the time, 24-7, into the water because we got this ecosystem, we got the fish that pull all the time into the water and you got these bacteria that are going to transform this fish poo into uh, plant, for, plant uh, nutrients. So 24-7, the plants have access to all the nutrients they need. So the, the only limit in aquaponics is really uh, the quantity of light and the temperature. Uh, that's why it's, if you want to maximize the growth of your uh, aquaponic setup, uh, the best thing you can do is to grow it into a greenhouse where you can maintain a high temperature and maximize the quantity of light available for your vegetables. Uh, obviously, we don't treat in aquaponics because if you put any pesticide on the vegetables, you're gonna the pesticide is gonna go back into the water. It's gonna affect the fish, but it's also gonna affect the bacteria, and the bacteria are um, are very fragile. You know, they are they are one cell element, so they can they can just disappear very quickly if you use any pesticide. That's why uh, in aquaponics, even if you wanted. Uh, it's not a good idea to spray aquaponics with any chemical. Uh, and obviously we don't want it because we want to eat a food that is healthy uh, and sustainable. And that's the whole idea of, uh, of uh, permaculture and aquaponics. Uh, the other thing, obviously, you produce the food where you consume it, so you don't have any transport. So that's fantastic. We use 10 times less water than classic garden, and we don't even talk about aquaculture because in aquaculture, the quantity of water used are huge. And it can be, in the it can be done in the city with the new systems we have now uh, in a very little uh, space. So if you got one square meter, it can be in a terrace, it can be in a balcony, you can start aquaponics. And then if you want to produce a significant quantity of food, you can you can use a, a greenhouse and uh, then you become very serious in terms of food production but already in one square meter you can every morning drink a juice of few leaves from your garden and in this case you're going to drink straight away some vitamins directly from from the living uh, form from the from the plant directly into your body so you don't lose any vitamins so it's going to give you a real boost so if you want to get rid of, uh, I mean, if you want to stop buying pills of vitamins from the shop that are artificial uh, as well, you can simply just have a little aquaponic setup at home. And every every morning you pick few leaves, you know, the oldest, le the oldest leaves of, for example, uh, spinach, uh, silver beets. And those ones, they are just living here, right? They are alive. So you pick them up, you mix them, or you eat them. If you want to eat them raw, you can eat them raw, or you mix them and you drink them. And in this case, it's going to give you a fantastic boost of vitamins. Uh, and it uses 70% less uh, energy than conventional gardening and aquaculture. You know that in aquaponics, we use a tiny pump to raise the water from the fish tank to the grow bed. But this water pump is, has to be designed the lowest, the smallest possible. So uh, you can see later on, technically, we, we have a technique to, to know what kind of of pump we need to we need to put in place for our aquaponic setup and we want to minimize the size of this pump uh, to minimize the quantity of energy that we use so by using the minimal quantity of energy we make sure that uh, we stay very sustainable and uh, more sustainable than any conventional food that you can buy from the shop that is coming from classic gardening or uh, aquaculture so now, what kind of food can you produce? We're going to start with the fish. What kind of fish can you produce? So, so the first thing is to make sure that the fish you're going to select is going to be adapted to the environment uh, and especially to the temperature that you are offering. So if you live in a cold country, if you live uh, in a country where the water can, can drop in winter in very low temperature, you're not going to put some tropical fish, right? It seems obvious. Uh, but if you don't know, you, you, need to, you need to take it in consideration. That's the first thing. And uh, the, the, the opposite is true as well, right? If you are in a tropical country, you are not going to put a trout, for example, because trout, after 23 degrees, they struggle to, to find the oxygen into the water. And uh, soon or later, they, they die, they are stressed. So just make sure that you grow a fish that is adapted to the temperature you live in. 
So how you do that? You simply watch around uh, if you have some fish farms around your, your area, what kind of fish the fish farms are growing. So here in this picture, we got a picture of tilapia, which is a, uh, a tropical fish. Again, that's the same fish that they used into the paddy field. And this tilapia is amazing for aquaponics, but it's only adapted to high temperature area. So if you live in a cold country or even here in Melbourne, the temperature in, in, in winter can drop significantly. So we can't use this fish. Also, you, you want to make sure that uh, it follows uh, the regulation because some species of fish are considered as pests. And in Australia, we are not allowed to grow tilapia, for example, simply because it has such an ability to grow. Uh, it grows extremely fast and produces extremely fast as well. If you release this fish into an environment where uh, the environment is adapted in terms of temperature, this fish could just prey around and take the place of uh, the native species. So just make sure uh, when you get a fish that is legal, it's legal when your country you live in. And also, uh, please don't release them into the natural environment because uh, it's never good to have invasive uh, spaces. So when you get a fish in aquaponics, it's for your own use. Uh, it can be for ornamental purpose as well, but make sure you, you don't release it into the environment. So what kind of fish do you want? Do you want a fish to eat them or you want a fish to look at them because they look good? So here, for example, in this video, we got some uh, goldfish and some silver perch. Uh, so there are two different types of fish. We can mix them into the same tank. So the, the goldfish, we got them because they look good. And the silver perch, uh, we got them because we want to eat them. So two different types of fish and two different possibilities. Um, the um, the ornamental fish, uh, obviously, if you are vegan, if you are vegetarian, you may be interested by this possibility. Uh, and for the others, uh, so for the silver perch, if you want to eat your fish, that's probably a, a good option. So here, you can also compromise. So we got, uh, for example, trout. Here, we got the golden trout. That's a fish that is... Um, uh, that is very interesting because you can eat this fish. It's the same species actually as, as the rainbow trout that we eat. The only thing is that uh, it's a different color. So uh, the, the, the color of this fish is, is very attractive. It's yellow, you know, it's golden. It's been selected for the color, but the flesh is the same as a, as a rainbow trout. So you find a compromise if you like to see the fish and if you like to eat the fish. You can find some spaces that are going to give you um, a satisfaction uh, from both angles. And now, what is your experience with fish and what you want to do? So here, uh, I got a very short movie to show you uh, what I was able to grow in a very small aquaponic setup, uh, thanks to um, trout. So trout are fish that are growing extremely fast. This fish that I'm showing you today uh, is uh, only not even two years. And you see the size of the fish uh, is probably around two kilo. So you can grow a fish extremely fast. Uh, but those fish, the trout, you know, they need a certain level of oxygen. So when you begin, it's probably not the best fish to have. Because if you have one problem, if you are in your aquaponic setup at the very beginning, you may lose your fish. You know, you grow your fish for years, but you need only one day to lose all your fish if you make a mistake. So when you start aquaponics, I reckon to start with fish that are a bit more hardy, such as uh, silver perch. Here we got, for example, a video with silver perch. You see all those fish are very social, they are very quiet, and uh, they, they are hardy. So it means that if you make a mistake in your aquaponics setup, if it's a big mistake, they're going to die, right? There is no secret. But if it's a little mistake, if you if your pump is off for a few hours or something, this fish is so strong that it's, it can survive to low uh, oxygen concentration or to high concentration of ammonia and nitrate. So when I say high, again, there is a limit, and the limit is uh, is quite quite low. You you can't go um, over a few ppm, a few milligrams of ammonia per liter, but Still, this fish is going to allow you more mistakes than the others, than trout, for example. So when you start, you want to make sure that in the place where you live, you will find that some fish that are hardy. And if you don't, if you don't have any knowledge, you can start with goldfish. Goldfish are able to grow in all types of water temperature, and they are very hardy. 
So that's a good fish to start with, but very few people eat goldfish, right? So it's not a fish that you're going to eat. But yeah, take this, uh, this parameter in consideration. So now we're going to talk about the vegetables, the plants. So there are different types of plants that you can grow. Uh, but the principle is the same as for the fish. You want to make sure that they are adapted to the, to the environment that you're going to offer them. So first, in terms of temperature, you want to make sure that uh, the plants you're going to put in your setup are going to be adapted to the temperature you offer, the temperature you, uh, of the area where you live in. So here, for example, we got uh, some nice lettuce. Um, the lettuce, or even imagine you want to grow tomatoes. You are not going to grow tomatoes in winter. So every specific species, even fish or vegetables, they are adapted to a specific temperature, specific quantity of light, specifically for the vegetables. So you want to make sure you put them, you use the good vegetables that are adapted to the environment you offer them. And you want to make sure you put them in the good season, right? You are not going to grow tomatoes in winter. So you need to follow the natural cycles. So if you don't know them, you just go to your garden shop and the, the, the guys there, they're going to help you. They're going to tell you what kind of vegetables are adapted to the season. And also you can look at what your neighbors are growing into the normal garden and you can grow the same thing in aquaponics. Uh, well, obviously there are some plants that are not adapted to aquaponics. You can't grow cactus, for example, in aquaponics because they don't like moisture. But most of the other plants uh, are going to grow really well in aquaponics. Now, uh, what type of plants? Same thing. You can go for edible uh, plants or you, you can go for ornamentals such as uh, flowers plants. So here in the middle, you got a picture of an aquaponic setup that is ornamental. So that's a very small aquaponic setup that we offer at Melbourne Aquaponics. And um, so the purpose of this setup here is a bit different to the others. It's not to produce food here, it's to produce, um, I mean, to enhance um, the, the, the look and uh, the beauty of the area. So that's a real feature that you got in your house. And then on the right, you can see here, for example, we got some snow peas that are flowering. Uh, so the flowers, the, the, the flower is purple here. You got the same version in, in white. But what, why I took this picture here is to show you that even if you are growing food for, uh, yes, yeah, if you are growing some vegetables to eat them, you can, uh, you can take advantage of the look of those vegetables because some of them look just amazing. So for example, here you see the color of this, this purple color is, is just fantastic. It's pink purple. I just love it. And uh, there are a lot of species of vegetables that are producing a fantastic vegetable full of flavor and, and very healthy for you. But also they're going to uh, look fantastic. So you can, same as a fish, you can have some compromise. So when you start aquaponics, you want to grow some vegetables that are easy to grow. So most of the time it's the leafy vegetables. So um, I'm talking about lettuce. I'm talking about spinach, um, <coughs> silver beet, kale cabbage, and all the herbs. So all those leafy vegetables, they are very easy to grow. They don't need a very complex profile of flavors. So um, it's, it's, quite, uh, it's quite simple. When you start your aquaponics setup, that's what you want to grow. And once, once you get some experience, but also once your aquaponics setup gets a bit older and more, has got more biodiversity and more uh, uh, nutrients to offer, you can grow food that is a bit more interesting, such as tomatoes and all the classic fruits, you know, chili, <coughs> sorry, chili, um, eggplant, capsicum, uh, strawberries, you know, a lot of fruits can be grown in aquaponics and they're going to develop some fantastic flavors. So here you see those tomatoes that we grow. Here you can really feel, well, I was talking about it uh, at the beginning of the presentation, but you really feel something completely different to uh, the tomatoes you are buying from the shop. So a few common questions that I'm going to respond to now. Um, and I don't know if I am able also to see in the comment if I can read you, you comments to see, um, because I would like to respond to your questions as well if you have any. Um, but anyway, right now I'm going to respond to this one. What is the cost of an aquaponic setup? So um, 
you, the budget for an aquaponic setup uh, is very open. You can start an aquaponic setup with a few hundred dollars, like like literally. And if you have if you are in India or uh, in uh, in Africa or in a, in a country that is a, a bit more poor, you can probably recycle some materials and build your aquaponic setup for nothing. So um, obviously here in Australia, uh, in Melbourne Aquaponics, we provide some really high quality um, aquaponic setup designed in uh, in wood, uh, in hardwood, so really with the best uh, the best material possible. And the setup we sell as the most expensive one with some really high price. You know, we are talking about few thousand dollars. While uh, if you want to build your aquaponic setup by yourself, with a few hundred dollars, like I'm, I'm thinking of two hundred dollars. With two hundred dollars, you can build an efficient aquaponic setup. So the price shouldn't be a problem. And again, if you are in a poor country, you can do it for probably nothing. If you, if you uh, find, if you recycle some, uh, some tanks and some equipment. So the price is not a, a problem in aquaponics. Then, how many fish can I grow? in my aquaponic setup. Uh, so the quantity of fish is completely dependent on the volume of the grow bed you have. So we saw that we need some bacteria, right, to transform the fish poo into plant fertilizer, into vegetable fertilizer. And those bacteria are living in the media that is into the grow bed. So the, the bigger the grow bed and the more fish you can have. In general, uh, I like to take the rule of 50 liters of grow bed per kilo of fish. And that's the maximum limit, the maximum quantity of fish you can have. So for example, if you have a very small aquaponic setup with only two lit 200 liters of grow bed, you can grow up to four kilo. I mean, you can stock up to four kilo of fish in your aquaponic setup. So when I say four kilo, it's a maximum quantity of fish biomass that you can have into your aquaponic setup. How should I manage the aquaponics during my holidays? If you go on holidays, it's not a problem. You just leave the aquaponics set up by itself. You don't do anything. You just make sure that uh, uh, it's going to be plugged. You don't turn the power off, but you don't have to feed your fish. So the idea is that the aquaponics setup is an ecosystem by itself and is, is uh, taking care of himself, right? All you need to do is to maintain some specific, uh, a specific environment. And one of the things that are very important is to have a pump that is going to allow your water to circulate into the system and to bring some nice oxygen uh, for your fish, your bacteria, and also the roots of your vegetables. So if you go on holiday, you just leave the setup as it is. It's not a problem. Um, and you, when you come back, uh, your fish are going to stay alive. You know, they can't, they can, uh, um, they, they cannot eat. They can fast. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for. <laughs> they can fast for a few weeks without any problem, even months. In the natural environment, the fish are not eating at all in winter. So, I mean, some fish. So it depends. Uh, it, it depends of the temperature of the water, obviously. But they are able to fast for a very long period of time. So it's better for the fish to not have food than asking someone to come putting some food in the in the aquatic environment into the into the fish fish tank basically and to overfeed the fish because that's where you're going to kill your fish and your whole ecosystem so when you go on holiday just leave the setup as it is it's not a problem don't consider it as a, as a how to say as a commitment as a problem the aquaponics setup is an entity by itself. You know, that's a combination of different creators and all creators are taking care of the others. So here you are, you are managing the whole thing, the whole environment, but it's not a micromanagement. So you can go, you can go on holiday without any problem. When you come back, everything is going to be fine. Then what are the risks involved with aquaponics? I have to respond to this question because uh, it's a common question. You know, we hear about all the stories of people who eat eggs and, uh, and they die, or uh, veggies and they die, because uh, the farmers are using uh, the, uh, the natural, um, how to say, the natural poo of the, of the pig or of the cows or of the chicken to, um, to fertilize uh, the, the plants. And uh, the issue is that those animals, they are warm blood 
animals such as humans they are mammals or not mammals for the for the chickens but anyway the temperature of their body uh, is maintained all year round which means they they, they stay the same temp temperature in winter and in summer and in those conditions you got some specific bacteria that can grow uh, Escherichia coli or a lot of uh, different uh, bacteria are able to grow in this in those specific conditions in um, in aquaponics we are in a totally different environment what i i forgot to say as well is that those uh, those uh, warm uh, blood temperature um, bacteria uh, can can go from the the, the pig they, they can live into the pig into the pool of the pig and they can contaminate uh, the vegetables that are going to be grown and then when you eat the vegetables you can fall sick but now for the fish the fish or in an aquaponic setup we are in cold uh, cold water um, i mean the, the fish are not uh, are not a warm blood so the, the temperature of the fish is going to be the same temperature as the environment and so they don't develop the specific bacteria that can be dangerous for humans so there is no bacteria that can be transmitted from the fish poo to the to humans there, there are no bacteria that can affect humans so th there is no disease that you can have in aquaponics so you have to keep that in mind because a lot of people are thinking oh it's very dangerous to to have the fish poo uh, close to uh, you know to the vegetables that you're going to grow but that's completely wrong the fish don't hold any bacteria that can be dangerous uh, for humans can I use an old tank to create my aquaponic setup? So that's what I was talking about, recycling the tanks. That's something that I really, I highly recommend everyone to do. Uh, it's very, very eco-friendly to recycle, uh, to recycle the, uh, the equipment. So yes, you can recycle, you can reuse. It's gonna be good for you, good for your uh, wallet. You're gonna save some money. It's gonna be good for the environment. The only thing you really need to make sure is that uh, it's food grade uh, material. It hasn't been used for uh, to hold chemicals in contact with chemicals or in contact with uh, any substance that can be harmful for you. I am of the grid. Can I put an aquaponic setup in place? The response is yes, you can. You just need to put a solar, a solar uh, generator solar panel with battery and with regulator and then you are uh, ready to go we got an aquaponics setup that is off the grid here in melbourne aquaponics and that is running really well does it smell no aquaponics doesn't smell because we are working in an aerobic environment so that's like a compost it doesn't smell now if you don't manage your aquaponics setup properly especially if you don't design it properly yes it's going to smell extremely bad because you're going to have some fermentation but the whole idea of melbourne aquaponics is to give you give you a support and to help you to produce uh, or to design your aquaponics setup in the best conditions and to avoid to be into the case where you don't design it properly and you got some fermentation uh, now we're gonna go to uh, other other things. So obviously here you got a few pictures. So that's a picture of the insect, few insects that you can find, see in aquaponics. Uh, yeah, the the juice that you can make every day, and the cuttings. The cuttings. I haven't talked about cuttings, but uh, it's very important to to understand that in aquaponics we are in this specific environment where we always got a lot of nutrients. We always got uh, water. So that's a pe perfect environment to make some cuttings. So if you want to build a hedge of anything around your house, just cut some cuttings, you put them in the aquaponic setup. And uh, most of the time, I got 90% chance of, uh, of success with this. And you can do everything, you know, tomatoes. I mean, not everything, but all plants that, are, that can be uh, reproduced by cuttings. Uh, you can use uh, this technique in aquaponics. So you can save a lot of money where to start so now that's a real question so i'm going to give you uh, an overview of the six-step process so the six-step process is uh, um, a, an a material that i offer to any one of you uh, it's a it's a free guide uh, you get you can get it from our website and uh, that's i'm just going to give you an overview but uh, you can just get it for free 
and uh, you can study it uh, very uh, we, i mean you can take your time to go through it but right now i'm just going to give you an overview of this six-step process so the first step is to understand the aquaponics principle that's the base really you need to understand the nitrogen cycle so here we talk about ammonia nitrate and nitrate and then the name of the bacteria you don't really need to understand that it's not important but what is important is to understand that yes we have some fish we have some bacteria we have some vegetables in between we make sure that they live together in good conditions and everything is based on the nitrogen cycle then you need to understand how to design your aquaponics setup so you got the fish tank you got the grow bed and uh, you basically have interactions uh, between the different creators but you need four different elements you need the fish tank you need a, a, a water pump you need the grow bed and you need what we call a bell siphon a bell siphon is very important i invite you to have a look at the six step guide again to have more information about the bell siphon but it's a very very important part of the setup you need to respect some specific uh, dimension ratio and to respect uh, a specific biomass, bit, uh, a specific ratio between your limit, between the quantity of fish and the quantity of grow bed. That's a, the limit of 50 liters of grow bed per kilo of fish that we talked about before. So again, you got, you're going to have some specific information into the six step guide. The pump, uh, you need to make sure that you select the good pump. So again, for that, you got uh, the information required into our guide, but that's a very critical point. And uh, the media, you need to make sure you select a media that is gonna offer a high surface area to the bacteria. So uh, we are talking about offering a good uh, surface for the bacteria to live in. And you wanna make sure that it doesn't interact with the pH of your aquaponic setup. So we offer a special trick for that. Uh, so going to the sixth step and you're going to have all this information and uh, also what is very important is to understand how to cycle your setup so when you put a setup in place at the beginning you don't have the good bacteria so uh, the mechanism the, the time the bacteria are going to be developed <coughs> you're going to have one one peak of ammonia and one peak of nitrate before being able to have some nitrate so this cycle takes a month but you need to make sure that it's it's uh, it's passed before being able putting the fish into the setup so it was very quick in terms of uh, uh, technical information about the six step process because we have a very short period of time to together today and uh, you can have this free information on my website and now what i want to give you is the way to success so for me the way to success in aquaponics uh, is very simple. In life, you got two ways of uh, learning things. You got what I call the common way and the way to success. So the common way is uh, to learn from your mistakes. So you know when you when you learn how to walk, for example, you can um, you, you you basically try. You try and obviously you fall, and then you try again. You fall again and. Uh, after practicing a few times and falling maybe a thousand times, at a one point you don't fall anymore because you masterize the thing. You, you basically manage it very quick, very, very well. You build the skills and the knowledge needed to do it properly. The only problem when you do that in aquaponics, uh, and you can still do it, right? But uh, you need to understand that you are going to have some uh, high risk of wrongly designing your aquaponics setup uh you're gonna have the risk of working with unadapted material and uh, not be able to manage your system properly so you are not going to be able to uh, produce any food and the few fish that you're going to put in your setup at the beginning you you have a very high risk to lose them so it's going to cost you a lot of time it's going to cost the life of a few fish and probably a few vegetables so it's very unfortunate and uh it can cost a lot of money as well especially if you wrongly design the setup and you have to do it again and sometimes some people just abandon stop the project because they think it doesn't work while they are just missing a little thing so for me the way to success is to learn from someone who can guide you so for example when you learn how to drive you just you don't just take a, a car and you drive on the road you don't take this chance because the risk is too high so what you do 
you go you go in a school and you learn how to drive right and that's exactly the same thing with aquaponics if you if you want to learn aquaponics what i recommend and is that you want to learn from someone who can guide you uh, towards good results you have to start with a good base with a good knowledge <coughs> and with a good design you don't want to build your setup with the wrong design and build in a whole setup and then you have to redo it again just because you made a mistake so you need to select the adapted material at the very beginning and making sure that you do the good thing to make sure that all the fish you have are growing in the good conditions the vegetables as well and everything is growing well and you're going to develop and create uh, and feed your family basically with amazing food so that's what i am here for basically that's why i built Melbourne aquaponics is to offer you this support now i offer a lot of uh, free support on the internet uh, you can find a lot of uh, free videos on the on internet uh, most of the time you don't know how reliable it is uh, i personally put a lot of information on youtube and uh, i offer also the six guide process right i also uh, created a book uh, i wrote a book uh, called the art of aquaponics um and uh it's it's a free it's a i mean it's not free it's um it's a digital aquaponics manual where i put all my knowledge i got a uh, hundred yeah we got 150 a bit more than 150 pages of uh, all the chapters that cover all the chapters of uh, aquaponics that's really a good support and what i'm offering you today is something uh, uh a way more com a way more complete it's a full training a full online aquaponics training uh with uh different modules where we go through all the thematics of aquaponics so all the different chapters uh here we got five modules uh more than 25 lectures and we go through the base so uh it's adapted to anyone you know you you start you can start as a complete beginner and we're going to bring you knowledge slowly 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 uh and we really start with the base right but into this uh into those five modules we got uh, some amazing information uh, that are also very important for experts you know we got some very technical information so we start from the base or we go to the really high level we want to make sure that anyone that follows this training is going to be able to manage his own aquaponic setup and to produce amazing food at home so here you got the title of those different modules i'm not going to go in detail into that uh, but you can trust me this training is going to build you to the next level it's going to allow you to build your aquaponic setup in good conditions and to manage it very properly so uh, when you when you subscribe to this uh, to this uh, platform to this uh, specific online training i called it easy aquaponics because that's the easiest way to learn basically because here you have access to this platform where you got all those modules and you can vision the modules at any time you want 24 7 so you don't have the problem of you know when when i was thinking of running a, a course online such as we are doing now you know a conference online the problem is most of people are never available in the same time and we are all in different time zones in the world so it's very complex so i i designed this those course those conference on the on the training so you can access to it as whenever you want you can review the module as many times as you want so that's a, that's really a, a really good point i think of this training is that it's adapting to any um agenda whatever you do in life you will always have time you can do it you know you can spend just 30 minutes here and there and you can go through the training to the different modules uh in like in few months but you can also do everything in one month if you if you want really uh, go fast so the idea is to go through these different modules that are really uh, giving you uh, all the information and build the, the skills and the knowledge that you need and then at the end of those modules you got a self-assessment to make sure that you are now able to manage the setup properly so uh, by self-assessment is going to be some uh, simple questions just to make sure that yes you uh, you understood the different modules and there is nothing missed if uh, the self-assessment is not successful i'm going to recommend you to re review a few modules just to make sure that you got the good uh, knowledge to then go to the next step which is building your aquaponics setup 
and now putting things in practice. So then you got all the videos, step-by-step -step video to build your own aquaponics setup. So we build the aquaponics setup together, and then you got some specific bonus on the thing you need to ta to focus on. You know, we got some uh, specific bonus on um it's it's uh for example a specific bonus on oxygen on ph you know all those things that are important to really maintain a good environment for your ecosystem so that's all the things that are into this uh, uh, this uh, specific online training but also what is very important is that uh you're gonna have my personal assistance it's not just a training where you are just uh, uh you just follow a few videos and then uh, you do whatever you can. No, in this training, I give you my personal support. So it means that if you have any question, if at any time you are doing something very specific and you need a specific information, I'm going to be here. Uh, you just email me with your question and I respond to you. So, uh, you know, any, I, I got a lot of exchanges in the world thanks to my videos. A lot of people are asking me questions and I respond to all emails. But sometimes it takes me time. But here, people who subscribe to this uh, to this specific training are my students. So you are privileged. You are like a VIP person for me. And when you ask me a question, I come back to you in priority. So that's what I have to offer you today. Um, the only thing is today you took the time to be here with me on this uh, specific webinar. So I want to offer you a bit more. So there is something that is coming with this training is that uh, it's 100% satisfied guarantee, which means that if for any reason someone uh, subscribes to the training and says, oh, uh, for some reasons I, I'm not, I, I don't like it or I don't know, there is anything that is not up to the standard for you, I reimburse you 100% of your investment. So there is no risk. I don't want to have any customer who is dissatisfied. I am here to offer value to this world to offer you the best support and to help people to grow food in the best conditions. I offer a, a lot of free um, uh, information. And when I, I have uh, customers who pay, I want to make sure they are 100% satisfied. So if for any reason you are not satisfied, I reimburse you straight away. I just want to know what is uh, the area that you think is not uh, good in the training. At the moment, I. I enrolled a lot of uh, students in this training and I didn't have anyone who was unsatisfied. But if it happened one day, you can be sure that I will reimburse you and uh, I'm going to improve the training just after once you tell me what is, uh, what is your real way it could be improved. At the moment, I think the, the training is, uh, is amazing. Everyone is really happy and a lot of people have been able to already uh, build their own aquaponic setup. So that's a real success. And today, for all those people who took the time to be with me in this uh, webinar, I'm going to offer you um, a special bonus. So the first thing, I'm going to offer uh, an extra bonus for the 15, pe 15 first people who, um, who get this training. Uh, I'm going to offer you a bonus video, which is going to allow you to link your aquaponic setup to the classic garden. So that's very important. I think that's a very good trick to have. Uh, so this little video is going to be a bonus for the 15 first who subscribe today. And for the 10 first, I'm going to offer the art of aquaponics, which is basically our um, digital aquaponics manual. And uh, those two bonus, uh, if you are the, in the 10 first, obviously you're going to receive the two bonus. If you are in the from 11 to 15 first, you're going to have only the extra bonus. So that's all I have to offer today. That's an amazing package. And you can have a link to this uh, specific uh, training into the, into the description of this video. So you just uh, go into the description. You're going to have a lot of information from this page into the comment of the video, into the description of the video. Uh, you, link, you click on the link. You will, you will find everything about this training. And and subscribe. So now, for some technical reasons that I don't understand, I can't read your comments or questions. But if you have a question, just leave it in the comments of this video. Uh, and I'm going to uh, do it. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, anyway, either into the training, if you subscribe to the training, we're going to spend a lot of time together and we're going to build your aquaponics setup together. 
in the best conditions. If you don't subscribe, we're going to see each other in the next uh, video on uh, the YouTube channel. Thank you for your following uh, this uh, amazing webinar, and uh, I wish you uh, the best with aquaponics. Bye-bye.